genre. This is it, folks. The final three episodes. Welcome to Beyond Geek by Night, where we go beyond the scenes of Geek by Night podcast. On today's show, we will be discussing the 42nd episode, Failure to Launch. So get your spritzers ready, because we're about to go beyond Geek by Night. I am your host, Matt Bennett. I am joined today, as always, by writer and creator, Scott Corelli. Hello. Writer and voice of William Medina, Nick Jimenez. Hello. Voice of Nathan Gershwin, Brian Brown. Hello. And voice of Janet Stokely, Kristen Miller. Hello. On this episode of Geek by Night, Failure to Launch, our team arrives back in their McKinney City at the correct time. Unfortunately, they're fugitives, having been blamed for the shenanigans at MC3. They make their way to Leo Dobbs' apartment, only to find out that Leo's astronaut fiancé is... Nathan Gershwin? After being sent further back in time by Gretchen, he settled into a quiet life with Leo. After realizing that the genius boy who planned the monorail heist, <clears throat> Gretchen and Simon send a message back in time to put the heist into motion, securing them the prototype of the game in the present day. With a new plan to stop William, the team dismisses Max Carmichael's offer to use his powers as part of the plan. When Janet gains control over her powers and allows the overachievers to get access to the launch party and closer to finding David. The underdogs break into Medina Enterprises and find the clones that will become the watchdogs in the future all dead. Billy arrives, but how did he know they were coming? Max betrayed them. Once Billy finds out about the rogue patch the advocates uploaded to the game, he reveals the truth. If you die in the game, you die in real life. All right. Um, so my first reaction to this episode, I posted on uh, <laughs> Discord that uh, just the finale vibes of this episode. By that, I mean storylines converging, um, loose plot threads getting wrapped up and, and kind of like a, a singular focus for all the action. So before we really uh, dive into some of the events of the episode, I want to ask the writers, Scott and Nick, um, tell me a little bit about writing a series finale and how this episode sort of serves that and um, gets us ready for this this final stretch. You know, I was thinking about this the other day because I knew we had this this conversation coming up. <clears throat> and it's a little like when you're playing a video game and you know you're about to go into the final boss. <laughs> and now is kind of your last chance to go around and like do all the little side quests and like <laughs> buy your little fairy ta- house, you know, I, cause yeah. it was after this, it was like credits and then it's over. So like, this is the time to do that. And I think we were, we had done so much work on the story and we knew that, you know, the next two episodes are kind of like going into the, you know, castle, so to speak. <laughs> Uh, of the final boss, whatever that means. And this was kind of our opportunity to really like get rid of or wrap up old business and really like weave stuff together before we send our characters off on their, you know, their last ride. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This episode was all about getting the, 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 all of the ducks in a row that are going to lead to the final two episodes um and making sure that everything was aligned exactly where it needed to be uh you know planes coming down for a landing and this is like the landing gear coming out you know <laughs> um and uh uh we're just all metaphors today um but uh yeah it's it's you you just want to make sure that everything is lined up and we're going to hit the runway and and have a safe and happy landing and um Yeah, that's kind of like what this was. So it was all about like, okay, I remember writing this episode uh, and and like breaking it down with with um, Nick and Cass in in the writer's room and uh, just sort of like looking at all of our plot and everything. And I think if I'm not mistaken, um, Nick, I think you and I, at least you and I, maybe Cass as well. I think we all re-listened to the whole show Hmm. again. 
and reread all of the scripts leading up to this and was like, okay, here's the list of all the things we need to like tie up. <laughs> and it was literally like going through the check marks of like, okay, how are we going to do this? That, 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 that. And we just went through the whole thing. It was a tiring process, but I think it's worth it because I think it, it really does feel like everything is paying off the way that it should. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the the phrase that we tossed around a lot is like we want the fin- the the actual finale to feel like it's paying off like a slot machine. Um <laughs> so uh hopefully <laughs> it's starting to feel that way. What are some of your the the writers what are some of your favorite endings of series? Maybe endings that you particularly like or endings that were very influential or endings that you just respect? Was there one that we talked about a lot in the writer's room, Nick, a series finale? Golly, I really, I'm struggling to remember anything that we used as like any kind of template. We, you know, Doctor Who is a really, Mm -hmm. we don't talk about it a lot, but it's like in all three of our like bloodstreams at this point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we talk a lot about how certain big Doctor Who finales felt like events or Mm -hmm you know, wrapped stuff up or seasons that had the idea of a season of television, having one story being told that is fulfilled at the end. I think Dr. Who, and I guess Lost was kind of the first time I was like, Oh, a series of television can be like a Harry Potter book, you know? <laughs> um, mm-hmm. And, but I don't remember any particular story being, being used a lot. I think we did talk about um, the Dr. Who season four finale. We, we, threw that around a lot just in how satisfying it was and how exciting it was. Like we wanted listeners to feel like that way about geek by night, the way that episode made us feel about Dr. Who. Yeah. Where it's not only like a big important episode and it's the finale and it's the culmination of like everything, but it's also the culmination of like an entire era of the show. And they're (laughs) like, everybody's coming back. This guy, this person, (laughs) this lady was in one episode. She's here. Like it was like everybody. I was like, well, that's how we just like run our whole show. So (laughs) <laughs> um, I think that was definitely one of our one of our touch points in terms of like a series finale, though. Um, I don't know. Like it was mostly I, I the ones that I find the most satisfying tend to be sitcoms just because they are more often than not like just made to just be like a real like and we're closing the book and it wasn't that nice uh you know kind of endings the the like final look back at the apartment as you shut the lights out and everyone's moved out kind of thing um and that's definitely like the vibe that we were kind of wanting with the finale but also oh you know what it is it's serenity that's the big that's Mm. the big one that's the big one that we pulled a lot from in terms of vibes Of like, oh, we want it to feel, I actually, I even think I broke that one down in terms of like. Oh, you did. You like, you showed us the math of serenity and you were like, I think we can like kind of you know, use this. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I was like, I was like, um, you know, you have like the first part, which just is like a random adventure kind of, but then it's like things start, you get the first reveal of like, oh wait, the plot thread that all the way goes back to the beginning. And then it just sort of like unravels, unravels, pays off like a slot machine. And then it's over and you're like, I could watch more, but also if there ever, if there's never more, it's fine. Cause like that was very satisfying. Um, so yeah, that was definitely another one as well. Awesome. All right. So, uh, I'm going to move on to Kristen and Brian, um, my special guests for the day. Um, I've had either of you two on for a little while. So, um, I've been asking a lot of guests and in, in these last few beyond episodes, sort of their thoughts and feelings around the series ending. So Kristen, I'm going to start with you. Um, now, now that the series is reaching its finale, um, I'd like to hear about your journey with geek by night over the years. And in particular, um, your thoughts and feelings about, about the show coming, coming to a real end and actually getting a, a conclusion. I have a weird thing about endings wherein for television shows i don't watch them uh (laughs) because i get very attached and it feels like saying goodbye so if i never watch the end i never have to say goodbye and so i hadn't actually started this the final season and then scott asked if i wanted to be on this episode and I was like, Oh, you're going to actually make me <laughs> listen to all of these. Um, Cause I 
it's so bizarre when I think about I mean I think it was like what 2012 I mean like I so much life has happened you know what I mean? Like I, I went to grad school. I had two kids. Like I, I, I don't even know. <laughs> and so it just feels like it's been such a, maybe like a soft background. Cause I'm, I, you know, I'm not in every episode and, but it's like such a warm, fantastic presence because I love the moments when we come together and do the table reads. And obviously like the, the story itself is just phenomenal. I enjoy being part of something that's so good um <laughs> so kudos to you guys and i i mean it's just so well made and the writing is lovely and i just i don't it's very strange to think that i am not going to have my like you know semi-annual come and do a table read <laughs> um and i i'm feeling some sort of way about it but it was so delightful i'm glad that i i have listened to you know season three <laughs> now and i um, and I do the same thing, like when season two came, like I re really listen to all of season one and then, you know, I, so I'm just, I don't know, I'm feeling some sort of way about it and, but it's good things. It's good things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what, what about you, Brian? You, you've been, we, we hear your voice every episode. Um, yeah. So I, I'm interested <laughs> to hear your, <laughs> your thoughts and feelings, um, both about, you know, playing Nathan as well as just your relationship with the show in general. Yeah. We're, we're back in my day. Um, <laughs> I feel that way sometimes. You know, it's funny because I've known Scott for God ever. One person I've, I've known for a long time, never met in person. Um, we've never truly met in person. Um, same with Nick as well. And, and you, Benny, I mean, you know, I've, uh, you know, I'm like Kristen, I come in every now and then, um, I have a, you know, a fairly weighty role, which is nice. I love it. And, um, I, I love getting called on to, to do play the role of Nathan. It's a lovely role and, um, in surprising ways in a lot of surprising ways. And, uh, I knew that Nathan's character couldn't be just what he puts out in the world. Um, Cass and Nick and Scott don't write shallow characters for the most part. They write characters with lots of different levels to them and they can uh, look Max surprise. He's a bad guy again, you know, um, <laughs> but is that to Max's true nature? I don't think so, but I get off, but you know, on, on different tangent, um, Nathan's a great character. I've been very um, blessed to be a part of this cast and be involved in it for so long. Um, I tried to be one of the cast members in the first time we're out. <laughs> we did this. Um, I didn't have any, did what, didn't have anything that fit what Scott wanted me. I also hadn't matured as a voice actor either. So hmm. I have put a lot of hours under my belt since then. And so it's, it's very interesting to see Nathan come to this fruition and see this journey come to an end. Um, it's, it is sad. It's sad, but it's also really happy because, like Scott said, you're see, you, we're landing the space shuttle with a slot machine on it in the boss's <laughs> lair. Um, you know, oh, wait. No, it's, I've taken it too far now. But, you know, really, it is. It, it, That's it, what it felt like. Oh, it is. It, all of those things at the same time. It's like, wow, That's what it felt like you, when win, we were you get a car, you get a car, you get a car. <laughs> um, but it's it's really cool to see Um it coming to an end and, and I think everybody will be super satisfied with it, you know, and I, I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss the table reads. I'm with Kristen. Me I miss, too. I love the table reads. Cause I get to see all these people I've known for years that I've never met. Really. I don't think I've met anybody really in the cast. I'm trying to think. No, I don't think I've ever met anybody in person. I think I've only known them online for all these years. So, but it's, it's an amazing journey, and uh, thank you to Scott and to Nick and to Cass um, and Chelsea and everybody else behind the scenes. You too, Benny. I mean, <laughs> for all your hard work, I know that we put in a lot of hard work over the years, and it's paying off. It's awesome. So, again, thanks, guys, uh, <laughs> for bringing me along. <laughs> so let's uh, let's jump into this really fun episode. Um, 
My first question, I think the most uh, pressing question, at least for me. I, I want to pause you right there because oh. I just want I just want to say <laughs> you calling this a fun episode, I think just relieved Nick and I's and Cass's like total anxiety about this just being <laughs> exposition dump. It's just like we were like, oh, God, is this going to be entertaining? And I was like, I believe in it. I think it can. And Nick is like, I don't know. And then <laughs> as he was directing, he was like, this is so hard, but I think it's coming out good. And. It's, uh, it was, yeah. So you saying this episode is fun, I think just relieved a lot of anxiety. So that's good. <laughs> For me, there's, there's such an energy in this episode to everything coming together. And that's, that's kind of the finale vibes I was speaking to is like, I, you know, I'm not just excited for how the story is going to conclude, but it just feels like there's one singular purpose for all of these characters that we've been gathering over the years. Everybody's kind of in one place. Everybody really has one mission. And that is really fun to me just because it, it is that sense of payoff. Maybe we haven't like actually, you know, we're, 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 we're pulling the lever on the slot machine. We haven't quite gotten it, but there's, there's that anticipation. And um, I did think it was very fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> Good. Something that was a little frustrating, I guess, is um, why can't Simon and Mindy catch a damn break? <laughs> I guess this is for for Simon or for for uh, Scott and Nick. Um, you know, obviously, I I I love these two, and and their relationship has been you know building and stretching and moving over the years, and uh, you know we we've definitely made some progress, but we're not not quite there. Um, you know. Uh, I, I want to hear from you guys, you know, about writing Simon and Mindy specifically, especially at a time like this where we are checking all these boxes. Um, I mean, for me, I think it's 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 my um, rom-com fandom uh, showing up, which is that like they can't get together, but like like be happy Illy ever after until the end. <laughs> like that's not. not... The end. Give yeah, sober, yeah, it's at, it's at, yeah, it's 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 at the end. So like. Yeah, they're going to keep getting interrupted and things are going to keep getting in the way because, like, that's the fun. Um, so that's what it is. That's my answer. I don't know. What do you think, Nick? No, you're right. It also kind of goes to, like, the uh, the sort of comic book soap opera-y nature mm -hmm. of it, of, like, you always kind of want – there is always something missing. There's always, like, a thing that's mess that's keeping them from achieving, like, they're happily ever after. Mm -hmm. yeah. And potential for hurt, potential for pain. Yeah, because I mean, you have this this shadow sort of looming over them with Simon and the Cure and everything like that. So I am uh, eagerly anticipating. They're also what left. they're also some, something yeah. I've, I've gotten from listening to the season. They're all very cavalier about there being a after this. That is true. They keep saying like, well, you know, after we wrap all this up, we can do this, or you know, well, once yes. we settle the Billy Medina thing, then and I'm like, you guys don't know like it's so, but we we weren't thinking about that when we were writing them. It's just something that I. Notice going yeah. back. It's the characters. I, I, mm. I mean, I think, I think, um, you know, uh, I think the three of us are different levels of uh, optimistic in general, <laughs> and we tend to write optimistic characters, and so it makes sense that these guys would be like, yeah. So, like, when this is over, like, well, <laughs> when the bad stuff is over, we'll we'll do all this nice. <laughs> we'll good deal stuff. with all this personal uh, stuff that we're not dealing yeah, with. Right now. Yeah, right, right, right. Um, it's just you know, I think it's our our uh, internal uh, optimists uh, mm -hmm. showing through our characters. <laughs> so, Kristen, I want to talk about Janet. Janet's abilities, especially during her introductory episodes earlier in the show, have really been plagued by her inability to control them. So uh, how did you feel reading that Janet finally learns to control her powers and, and use it in a way that, you know, helps the overachievers get what they need and, and move this play in forward? I mean, Janet, Janet's pretty pivotal in this episode. I think this is such a beautiful example of how good the writing is, honestly, because Janet is a secondary character at best, right? Like she's so like, but you have given her this beautiful background, like what Brian said, right? Like every character has so much depth, right? Um, and bringing her in and, and allowing her to have this moment and like the things that are happening next, I'm so excited for, for Janet, but <laughs> absolutely like the depth of, the you'll never listen to them, but you're excited. About <laughs> <laughs> I've written the script. Okay. <laughs> I will. Probably, I will. I, <laughs> um, 
And so just the depth of the character, right? Like that there is, in fact, that she gets to have a moment, right? That they, they could have sort of used her as a bit piece at the beginning to sort of show like, oh, this is happening to lots of people and not all of them are good. And But then like bringing all of these characters together, um, I love it. I love the the sort of meta comment of like, we're like half redemption arc at this point. Um, <laughs> we don't have any more room, but you you do it so I mean, I know it's not effortlessly, but it feels so effortless, right? When you're listening, you just enjoy it. And um, that is such a skill. So thank you for, you know, giving that character some some depth and some breath. And um, but yes, it was a lot of fun to to give her a little bit of confidence back because, right, she had hmm. I mean, I know she didn't. You kind of learned that in this episode, but you play it that way, right? When you're an actress, you yeah give those vibes off right when she was doing the youtube channel stuff and then to give her some some of that um brightness back was a lot of fun so thank you (laughs) (laughs) now uh brian um i actually have a a listener submitted question uh, about nathan Mm -hmm. this is from harley w on discord and they wanted to know how you as a performer approach playing the different versions of your character with all the timeline shenanigans. So in this episode, we really have two Nathans. We have our, our current Nathan, and then we have a Nathan who has been through a lot and is now in a relationship and, and has changed his ways and, and used the stones to destroy the stones, so to speak. And um, <laughs> I, uh, That is what he did. <laughs> it's a good nod. Um, yeah, I read the script and I'm like, God damn you guys <laughs> making me do this. Because... I'm like, okay, well, uh, as as a voice actor, you're like, okay, do I do I record them all in one chunk? Do I switch from side to side to side? How how am I gonna do this? Now, fortunately, um, I guess maybe I don't know. I was sick at the time. I was just coming off being ha- sick, having a head cold, and so my voice is kind of raspy, and it's it's way different than it, it normally is. And I'm like, oh, this is gonna suck because I got, I had the deadline rolling. You know, you, you got you know them telling you you know we need your lions come on guys we need your lions because <laughs> we need your lions and and i understand that you know they want to get it all together and uh, so i'm like okay shit i gotta gotta put it out so i did it and i was like okay cool and i'm gonna do it i think i did it all in one chunk if i remember correctly and i apologize to scott because i knew he was gonna get the audio and he's gonna have to edit it <laughs> and um i so i i remember doing it and going okay Nathan at the bar is going to be slightly drunk. Let's let's do that. Let's make him that way so that way he's easy to kind of differentiate a little bit more than the other Nathan who's obviously more mature, more with it, um, knows is happy where he's at. And we get to understand why he's happy where he's at and why he used the stones to make the stones go away, <laughs> um, which is a great way to get rid of the MacGuffin. It was because that would have been like the thing to solve it all. Hey, let's get Nathan to fix it one more time. Woo. <laughs> and Nathan's like, sorry, kids wished it away, um, <laughs> you know, for happiness. And uh, so it's, it was a challenge as an actor trying to do those dual roles um, at times and still hold on to that um, confidence now that Nathan has rather than arrogance um, and that he is truly a more centered individual and knows where he wants to go. He finally realized that infinite power is boring. Hmm. So it really is. I mean, can you imagine you can make anything? It'd be, oh, he'd be so bored. He'd be so bored. <laughs> I would be at least. So, yeah. For, so it was a challenge. It was, it was a great challenge. And I, hopefully it came across that you have the, differentiations between the two of them enough um yeah i listened to it and i thought i did an okay job scott cleaned me up really nice thank you scott (laughs) yeah there's a there's a real sincerity and authenticity to nathan's kind of second chance and um I, i i really like that you pointed that out that you know it is boring for him to be able to do whatever he wants and now he he got to try this new adventure just on his own and yeah, I I thought that was very sweet in this episode. Uh, and again, it, it's a nice nod to to Scott's rom comness that it, you know he did it for love, so <laughs> <laughs> which is great. I mean, it, it is. And uh, Billy McCartney as Leo, I love Phenomenal. Billy so much. He is so amazing. <laughs> and uh, 
yeah, it was, it's, it's great to play across from him to be his husband. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got uh, another listener submitted question here. This one is going to be for Scott and Nick. Um, and Ash on Discord asks, how long did you know that Nathan was the mysterious astronaut fiance? Was it a day one plan or something that came later? So we, this is touching a little bit on the, the check in the boxes that you guys talked about. Um, but, you know, is it something where you sort of lay yourself breadcrumbs and pull them off or is it something that you sort of had had on the shelf for a while nick do you remember what no i mean it definitely it was that you know i think we all three of us like stories where whether it's a film or a book or a video game or whatever where you can tell the storytellers have like used are using every single piece of the play set mm -hmm. and i think it goes all the way back to back to the future minute of like that was what we loved about those movies is like you know famously everything you know they say the whole movie in the opening credits and every <laughs> every single yeah. single little thing it's not a huge epic story but everything kind of wraps up and it was really important to scott that nothing be wasted that i think he i think it annoys him a little bit when it's like he notices that like something doesn't tie up or that like <laughs> something could have been, but it, we, you know, we didn't, or like, eh, it's a loose end. And so, yeah. for example, the monorail by yep, way the back Genius Boy, yep. in genius boy, there was this thread that we never figured out of like, well, who stole them? Like who wanted to steal the thing in the monorail? Like, why did the monorail heist happen? And while we were mapping out this finale, we were like, Oh, what a great opportunity to use that dangling thread in an effective way. And mm -hmm. We're like, okay, well, how can that be the case? What could have been in the monorail that we is now useful that right. we could say well, retroactively make it be like, oh, well, now, oh, my God, it's so perfect. It's like we always planned it this way. <laughs> yeah, well, so, okay, to be clear, to be clear, there was a plan in place for the monorail originally. There was a plan, for sure. It was a plan, but in in the way that we write, where we go down paths that we end up in dead ends and then we have to backtrack – that plan had to get abandoned. Like, oh, this doesn't work because mm. it it just did it didn't fit into the story anymore. It wasn't going to work out. So then when we got here, I was just like, we got to figure out this fucking monorail, guys. Like, I just, <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's, it's going to drive me crazy. Um, and uh, and so um, in doing that, uh, uh, we sort of like. Yeah, uh, we 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 wanted to uh, figure out like we were like oh yeah like the game and the th so we we figured all of that out. Um, but uh, in terms of the astronaut, um, I think that was a thing. If I remember correctly, I pitched that it was Nathan very 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 early on, and you and Cass were like. I don't know. Let's we'll we'll see. Like it was kind of you guys weren't like sold right away, but I was like I was like okay, like you know, it's not mm. something we need to like pay off right or, now. Or even anyway. even the astronaut husband being a thing that needed to be revealed. Right, you know. It was oh, kind of right. just like exactly. a bit. Yeah. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um totally, totally. And so cuz that I think that was more your guys' trepidation was just like, I mean, does that need to be a thing? Like whatever. <laughs> um and I think when we got to this episode I pitched it again and pitched the whole thing in terms of like, he goes back, falls in love. It's real. It's a real <laughs> thing. Um, because I, I like the idea of the, the, the underdogs being like, well, we have to bring this guy to justice, but justice means like taking his happy ending away and taking this life away. Hmm. And would they really be able to do that if it really seems like he's changed? And I wanted to prove that he had changed both through Leo's love for him um, and his description of this whole thing, but also from the fact that like he took his powers away, like mm -hmm. he couldn't do anything if he wanted to. Um, and that was like, just to prove that he really had changed. And I think when I pitched all of that, I think you guys were like, yeah, okay, that's pretty sweet. Because <laughs> then it became <laughs> useful. It just became, I'm, I guess I'm against like, explaining for the sake of like the storyteller patting himself on the shoulder of like, right, cool. Right. I'm glad that ties up. Great. That really adds yeah. to the story. But like, oh, well, this is like really effective. Also, Scott, you know what I just noticed for the first time is you're right. It is his, his telling of the tale to the underdogs that they're able to be like, oh, well, we believe this. Like that was super effective. <laughs> And yeah, it's like, oh, he gets to tell a story. He's a storyteller. And like, right. Yep. In the moment, that skill really comes to his 
his benefit. So, so the answer is yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. While I have you on here, Kristen and Brian, since I'm, I've kind of been asking everybody questions like this, um, I'm interested to know from each of you. I'll start with Kristen. Um, looking back on Geek by Night as a, as a whole, whether it was an event in an episode or whether it was something behind the scenes, what is your favorite Geek by Night moment or memory? I wish I had some time to think about this beforehand uh, because I wanted, <laughs> there's so many, right? There's so many. Um, I will say, oh, it's, can I, oh no, it did happen. Sorry. Um, one of my favorite memories of in recording was um, recording the giant scenes, the Godzilla fight scenes, like <laughs> in my closet. Alo- like it's such a, strange experience <laughs> to be doing this so like I, that was a lot of fun uh the sort of physicality of trying to make those sounds <laughs> and not blow out my microphone and um do all of that so that was um, sort of the challenge of that was delightful part of the joy actually is the recording of it i you know we've been doing this for so long and like i said so much life has happened i have worked in places that have fancy recording studios <laughs> and so like i filmed the first or recorded sorry recorded <laughs> the first um season in a in the television studio that i worked at and then i hmm. worked at a university with a very fancy like school of music and so i got to do that in a you know a sound booth and that was a lot of fun and so there's just like this whole and then in my closet at my house which is his own kind of ridiculousness I'm <laughs> and so that has just been the experience of making this I think as as a creative person has just been a lot of fun I've not ever done anything like this you know I've done short films and plays and you know all the different things but not anything like this and so it's just been a delight to be a part of um, for me, I, I think I love the table reads. And for me, the favorite one is by far the last table read we did. Um, mm-hmm. it was very, um, bittersweet. Um, but it was, it's amazing to a herd all of us together because we're like cats and herding cats is always exciting. Um, so to get all of us together, um, for a table read, is always a, a great challenge and getting, you know, the main voices but it's always cool to see you know to see chris to see naomi um you know see scott and nick Cass, um and hear all these different characters being portrayed that you've only heard in the podcast or on you know through the through the story itself and then you know to hear everybody just banter have fun and enjoy the story it's unfolding for them but yeah that's probably one of my favorite moments that are also when the scripts come out and all of a sudden they're like, okay, here's the script. And you're like, and it's always Chelsea's the first one. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Cause she's always so excited. And it's, it's great to see that and to sit down and read them and go, damn, this is good stuff. And it's going to be fun to put it all together and see what comes out of it. So yeah, those are some of my favorite moments behind the scenes moments more than uh, anything else. Yeah. I have another one. I have, this is, this is it. Um, the episode in the maze, uh, recording that together. Yeah. Mm. Right. Because usually, yes. you know, we did the thing alone and, and the editing is incredible. I'm always so impressed by, it sounds like we're just having a conversation, but I do think the performances I know for me, but even listening to everybody else, knowing that they did their bits in a similar fashion where you, we actually got together and recorded them so that ability to play off of each other, I think, really brought out really lovely performances. Mm-hmm. And um, I was really grateful to to have that experience doing those bits, especially because my care, especially for me, my character got to interact with, you know, characters that she doesn't always get partnered with. And so that was mm-hmm. a lot of fun. All right. So um, before we wrap up here, I'm wondering if anybody else has any other uh, thoughts about this episode specifically, or maybe uh, shout outs to any people who contributed to this episode that maybe aren't in the room right now. Yeah. Before I do that, I'd like to talk to, I I'd like to speak on the two people that, that are in the room. Um, yes. Please. You know, just, just to, to Kristen, I'll say, you know, it's, it's such a, like, uh, 
cool kind of like feedback loop of like, you know, hearing that Kristen was inspired or, you know, motivated by like the writing. And like, that was like kind of her thing is like, I feel like all three of us, we were like writing it for Kristen's voice and like, (laughs) like hearing Janet in those first episodes and the energy of like, wow, I really liked what she did with the, Oh, now I want to keep writing for her. And like, Oh, what happens if this, what happens if this? And so it's just, I don't know, like living in LA, I'm used to only just seeing that commodified, like, Hmm. Like a money, and then you and then you sell it to the studio, and then they sell it to the theaters, and then we make a big. But like uh, when I li- when I listen to the show, I'm like, God, we're really just doing this to delight ourselves and <laughs> the people listening, of course. And like, and that's I'm I'm appreciating that part of the show. The older I get, and <laughs> you know, with Brian, it's like with all the respect, like to people like like Kristen and Naomi and Chelsea, the people that we met this reboot, this generation of the show. It's it's the just the fact that I don't know, like Tofty and Brian and Ray and Chris and Andrew, it's like, gosh, I've really I've been working with these people since I was a teenager. And just grazing that many lives, uh, as as briefly as we do, just checking in on each other over Skype and then Zencaster and whatever through the years. It's it's a really it's a really cool thing. <laughs> so much yeah. life has happened and just yeah. this <laughs> sort of I mean, I know for you as a creator, it's obviously much more of a presence, but I, for it to just be there so solidly because it has been for such a long time, it's just been a really cool experience. I mean, yeah, just to echo, uh, you know, what Nick said, it's like, you know, Kristen was uh, referencing earlier, like how, like, you know, she was in for one episode or, you know, one story arc and then uh was like well i'm not in every episode but like you know whatever um but like they yeah like just to echo what he said is like i mean the reason that you kept coming back is because we couldn't get enough of you guys like <laughs> you know like we just wanted to keep writing you your characters we didn't want your characters to go away um so yeah and you guys are both so good at this um and you know i i think that like brian you i like this is like uh, we knew going into this that this was going to sort of be Nathan's last big episode like he's in you know the 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 he's in he's in more but like never is he going to have this much of like a starring role in the show anymore um and so uh we knew that we wanted him to go out with a bang and so you know we gave him the big monologue is like story and then also the scene where he's opposite himself um i also just personally just thought it was really funny the idea of this like a self-absorbed uh character this character that started so self-absorbed ends the show in a scene with himself um i just thought that was a really uh poetic way for him to kind of go out um but uh uh yeah i just uh but we knew that writing that stuff that you would be capable of like matching what we heard in our heads when we were writing it um, or we wouldn't have. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah, you wrecked it and, and uh, writing that scene with, uh, with Janet where she uh, figures out her powers and like her reaction to it. Um, and like the catharsis that she feels in that moment. Um, like you played it so well, uh, Kristen. And I just, um, <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, it was so awesome. It's so great. You guys are great. I so. I think about Nathan like he was so supremely unlikable, right? Yeah, so just, yeah honestly. Just, and you really at the end, you you're, I mean, I was rude for him. I'm like, way to go, good, my dude. <laughs> like, um, and so I think that's a testament one to the writing, right? That you were able to bring us back around, but also the performance, right? Like you sold that as something that was you know you could feel the love and, and the sincerity in that. And it was just, I, I love it when characters get that uh, redemption arc, right? Like you to come yeah. around and you, you take them from somebody so, so unlikable <laughs> <You're> like, oh. <laughs> and, and then you just start rooting for him. Right. Like, and I, I love that he got to go out on such a, a lovely note. Well, and the same could be said about Janet too. I mean, cause honestly, She's not the most likable character <laughs> either. <laughs> and, um, very difficult to get along with, but in the end, she's actually her and the uh, the Supermax crew, as I like to call them, were all kind of really bond together, and they're actually 
not bad people. I don't think. I think they just um, they're just built that way. Something like that, you know. <laughs> they're just, that's kind of the the situation of their of their life and their formation of of, of um, their experiences. So, mm-hmm. and I think it's it's great that we've got a chance to redeem these characters because as an as an actor, when I when I do these things, honestly, most of the time we're doing it in a room by ourselves. We don't know. I'm like. God, I hope Scott likes this. I hope Nick likes this. I hope Cass likes this. Because you know, honestly, as as an, a voice actor, again, you don't know. You just like I'm I'm here with my cat. You know, I'm <laughs> recording. Or I'm in my closet with the clothes around me. There's nobody there to give me input, and so it, it's been a a great challenge. And uh, but it's shows in the product, I think. And it it's has just been a delight. Pretty awesome. I was blown away by this stuff. I was, I was just like, wow. <laughs> Yeah. Scott, you made me sound really good. <laughs> In terms of like people who aren't here though, like giving shout out. Oh yeah. Um, you know, I mean like it 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 it's it becomes it, it, it we say it every week but it bears repeating, you know, but I think you know Naomi just crushes this episode. <sighs> As um, I had so much fun. Like one of the reasons Scott was, you know, kind enough to throw me this episode was like it's like pieces moving in a Game of Thrones way that I really like. We kind of knew going in, this was sort of a spiritual, a companion to uh, the blind spot where Lorelai and the overachievers get to team up mm. and how much fun we had with that, that like chemistry. And so I don't know, just her, Naomi's so good at like freaking out as, as the heist is slowly falling <laughs> apart in her hands. <laughs> and like these monkeys have screw- ruined everything again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought Morgan, I mean, Morgan always does an excellent oh, job. Yeah. I loved Morgan in this episode. I love uh, how she has taken Mindy, like the transition from Mindy in the early episodes of like, I don't care. And why am I here? And like, please, <laughs> no. And then like, no, you, you have to do this. And why have you not already done this? And like, just the, the fierceness with which she cares and the way she performs that is just so good so way to go mm-hmm. morgan <laughs> yeah it's it's nice to see mindy's strength grow along with her vulnerability in her softer yes. side and like that that defines morgan for me so to be able to hear that performance come out has been really nice so I, I especially liked her her moment with simon in this episode just mm-hmm. seeing seeing all these facets of mindy all at once and the, also the editor, whoever edited that, the overlapping voices yes. piece, like that person, whoever it was for this Chef's episode, kiss. also was... deserves a little bit of a kudos because that was a lovely, yeah. like... Nick synced it up really nice. Uh, uh, and then I, I think I made it more, like, audible where, by, like, shifting them all the way to the left and right <laughs> so you could, like, yep. fully hear both of them at the same time. Um, but, yeah, that turned out really good. Um, so, Yeah. I was very proud of how that ended. Up. It was so good. Um, I, so I want to shout out um, the whole under uh, underdog crew uh, in the uh, the scene where they're all uh, walking down the stairs. And it's just mm. and one. So like like there a couple things going on there. Like one, it was sort of like um, the last moment in a really long time that they're going to be able to talk about anything completely, uh, un- hmm. I- I- like inconsequential, like sandwiches um, and bread. And, <laughs> yeah. Right. With the bread. Our clones um, alive. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was also, uh, sort of a callback to the second episode of, of classic geek by night where they like go after the muffin man and mm. they're, uh, they're, they also are going down. They're like in an elevator having like a, having like a conversation like this. And so I kind of wanted to do like a little bit of a callback to that. And um, everybody in that scene is just so good at writing the line between we're about to do something that's a really big deal, but also right now we're trapped in a stairwell so we can talk <laughs> about bread if we want. Um, and uh, it's just, it's just really, really well done. Um, and Nick directed the hell out of it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's just, uh, I'm going to miss these guys. Um, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> See, this is why I don't watch ends because it's like saying goodbye. Okay, I want to say thank you again to my guests today. This is a wonderful conversation about a great episode. Scott, Nick, Kristen, and Brian. 
Thank you so much for joining me today, and thank you to all of you, the fans, the underdogs, for listening today. If you'd like to support our show, please join the Dueling Genre Patreon at duelinggenre.com slash support. You can also tell your friends, families, and followers to subscribe to Geek by Night on wherever you're listening to this right now. Thanks for going beyond Geek by Night with us. Stay tuned for the penultimate Geek by Night installment, episode 43, Playing the Game. And we'll be right back here after the episode discussing what happens. I'll see you all then. Have a super day. Super day.